Hola a todos, muy buenas tardes, muy buenos días. Espero que ustedes estén muy bien. Eh, hoy vamos a hablar de los adjetivos descriptivos, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, eh, ¿cómo me describo yo? Yo soy de los Estados Unidos y estamos usando el verbo ser. Vamos a usar el verbo ser con este, eh, con cuando usamos los adjetivos, ¿ok? Yo soy de los Estados Unidos, entonces soy estadounidense, estadounidense. Eh, yo soy bajo, eh, yo soy cómico, un poco inteligente y eh, amable, ¿ok? ¿Cómo eres tú? ¿Cómo eres tú? Dime, dime, ¿cómo eres tú? All right, so we're going to talk about descriptive adjectives today, so let's go ahead and get into the PowerPoint. Hope everyone is well. All right, there we go. Adelante, muy bien. Ok, entonces, los adjetivos son palabras que describen, que describen personas, lugares y cosas. Y en español, los adjetivos descriptivos se usan con el verbo ser. El verbo ser. Uh, and that's, we use the verbo ser to point out like characteristics, uh, nationality, size, color, shape, uh, personality, appearance. So how we're describing nouns with these descriptive adjectives and the verb ser. Now remember, we're going to use the verb ser because we're talking about more permanent things, cosas más permanentes, en vez de el verbo estar, right? And remember, what does uh, estar do? How you feel and where you are is when you use el verbo estar, okay? But when we're talking about uh, identity, uh, nationality, origin, Things that uh, describe us, uh, something that's not uh, short-lived, like a sickness or a health, well-being thing. We're going to use el verbo ser, okay? Muy bien. So, let's see here. Uh, now, we have to keep in mind that the syntax in English is a little bit different, okay, uh, than it is in Spanish. And we also have to remember we have to change our... Uh, endings to fit the gender and number of the subject, right? So let's take a, take a look here. Uh, in English, the forms of descriptive adjectives do not change to reflect that, right? They don't change. If it's a male, they don't say, he is nice so. And if it's a female, they say, he is nice or she is nice sa, right? But in Spanish, that's what we have to do. Um, so it doesn't change in English to reflect that uh, change in gender and, and number. But in Spanish, we have to change Our descriptive adjectives, much like uh, what we did with our uh, numbers, right? And with our um, other uh, adjectives that we've used to uh, describe things, we're going to have to make them plural or feminine or masculine, depending on that subject. So we would say, Juan es simpático. Yo soy simpático, but Elena es simpática. Uh, Elena es simpática. Ellos son simpáticos. Just likewise, you would say ellas or ellas son simpáticas or nosotras somos simpáticas, ¿no? Muy bien. Entonces, tenemos que cambiar el adjetivo con cada sujeto, ¿no? Okay, now, adjectives that end in O have four different forms, okay? Because those adjectives can have a feminine form, masculine form, both singular and plural, and also... Uh, Yeah, singular, masculine, singular, and plural. Feminine, masculine, singular, and plural, not singular, masculine. Feminine, masculine, singular, and plural. So we say, el muchacho alto. Okay, now, this is another thing to note that, uh, right, we don't say the red car in Spanish. We say, el carro rojo, right, the car red, okay? El carro rojo, el muchacho alto, right? El muchacho alto. Los muchachos altos. La muchacha alta, las muchachas altas. Okay, so each different subject pronoun or subject, this isn't a pronoun, has to be agreeing with the number and gender of the adjective. Okay, now a little bit different for our adjectives that que terminan en e, right? Uh, or that they have a, or the ones that have a consonant form because they have the same masculine and feminine form. So there's only two forms for those. Just the singular and the plural, right? El chico inteligente, los chicos inteligentes. La, la clase difícil, las clases difíciles, okay? So uh, those adjectives that end in consonants 
we'll add es on the end to make them plural. And the ones that already end in e, you would just add the s to make them plural, but they don't change in gender. Okay, now adjectives that end in or, or, okay, they're variable in both gender and number. Now, these are a little bit different because we're going to be adding letters on to the end of this consonant, uh, but they also have to fit for the feminine form different from these, uh, like, difícil, difíciles, right? For the or, typically we're talking about um, someone when we're talking about or, el hombre trabajador, right, the hardworking man, los hombres trabajadores, right, la mujer trabajadora, las mujeres trabajadoras. So if they end in or, you will have to make four different forms for the different possibilities. Okay, take a minute and take a note of these adjectives. Go ahead and pause the video and write down the definition for these. We have, tenemos muchos adjetivos. Uh, primero, alto, right? Antipático. If you're antipathetic or antisympathetic, you are mean, right? Or unpleasant. We have bajo, okay? If you've ever heard of Baja California, right? It's below, so it's short California. Uh, bonito, bonita, pretty, right? Bueno, good. Delgado would be thin. Difícil, good cognate, difficult. Fácil kind of looks like a little bit like difícil, right? Without the, the I. Fácil, easy. Feo or fea, ugly. Gordo, gorda, fat. Now, this is an, also an interesting uh, kind of note, side note to make here, that it, los términos en el mundo hispano hablante, por ejemplo, como gordo o gorda, it's not always such a negative thing, right? It's often, often used as a very endearing term. Uh, like my friend from Mexico, his mom calls uh, the, the dad, his mom calls her husband, Gordo, or panza, which means belly. And he's not even, you know, he's not even a big guy, but it's just kind of in term of endearment, right? So you'll hear that a lot. Even my Mexican friend calls his wife gordis, right? Uh, it's just a very much of a term in, of endearment, not as offensive here as in the U.S. Uh, then we have grande, right? El Rio Grande, the big river. Grande. Guapo is good looking, guapa. Importante, importante. Inteligente. Interesante, another good cognate. All three of those are really good cognates. Okay, we have joven, which can be a noun and an adjective. We can say el joven, right? The young boy or la joven, the young girl. We can also say el chico joven, the young boy, or la chica joven. Okay, so, muy bien. Malo, if something is malicious, think of bad, like Draco Malfoy, right? He's bad. Uh, we have mismo which is same, moreno or morena, brunette, pelirrojo, pelirroja, redhead, oh, mucho as well, mucho, a lot or many, pequeño, pequeña, small, no, very good, rubio, rubia, blonde, then you can also say güero or güera for that, güero, G-U-E-R-O, muy bien, we also have sympathetic, simpático, if you're nice, simpático or likable, Tonto, foolish or dumb, silly. Trabajador, trabajadora, hardworking, comes from the verb trabajar, right? Trabajar, to work. And then we have viejo, vieja, old. Muy bien. So make sure you've got those written down. Now we also have adjectives of nationality. Now at the beginning I said, yo soy de los Estados Unidos, Estados Unidos. entonces es, yo soy estadounidense, right? Estadounidense. Now, if you were like from a place like uh, Grenada, you would say, yo soy granadiense. Or if you would say, you're Spanish, you would say, yo soy español. Or francés, French, francesa. Uh, japonés, japonesa. Okay, so these are different from the countries. These are the adjectives of nationality. So go ahead and take a minute to write those down as well. All right. Now, adjectives of nationality are formed like other adjectives uh, that we've talked about already, and those that end in O will change to an A when forming the feminine, right? Chino, China, Mexicano, Mexicana. And the plural is formed by adding an S to the masculine or feminine forms, Argentinos, Cubanos, Cubanas, okay? But adjectives of nationality that end in E have only two forms, like inteligente did and difícil. There, it was inteligentes or inteligente, right? Doesn't change for gender. Canadiense, canadienses, estadounidense, 
estadounidenses, right? So, entonces, somos estadounidenses, right? Estadounidenses. Estadounidense, ¿no? Muy bien. Now, to form the feminine of adjectives of nationality that end in a consonant, you're going to add a. So, for example, alemán, alemana, japonés, japonesa, español, española. Mi amiga Paula es española. ¿no? Mi amiga María es española. Uh, inglés would be English, right? Or inglesa, female, English person. Muy bien. Ok, now, la posición de los adjetivos. La posición de los adjetivos es muy importante porque es diferente de lo que tenemos en inglés, ¿no? Our adjectives are different in Spanish than they are in English. Los adjetivos descriptivos y adjetivos de nacionalidad eh, generalmente siguen los sustantivos que modifican, ¿ok? They generally follow the nouns that they modify. Entonces, tenemos aquí, el niño rubio es de España. El niño rubio es de España. The blonde boy is from Spain. La mujer española, right, there's our adjective, española. La mujer española habla inglés. The Spanish woman speaks English. Muy bien. So, our adjectives are going to follow the noun, right? To come right after our noun. El niño rubio, la, la mujer española, el profesor tonto. El estudiante inteligente, right? The intelligent student. Muy bien. So, unlike descriptive adjectives, adjectives of quantity precede the noun, they, uh, the modified noun. Okay, now we're talking about like muchos or uh, numeros, por ejemplo. Dos, right? Hay muchos libros en la biblioteca. There are many books in la biblioteca. Hablo con dos turistas puertorriqueños because we're... Like I was saying, we're using these as nouns, right? These kind of like our numbers are nouns. Okay? Hablo con dos turistas puertorriqueños. Hay muchos libros en la biblioteca. Muy bien. All right, now, bueno and malo can appear before a noun, uh, but when placed before a singular, uh, masculine singular noun, they are shortened to buen and mal. Okay? Buen and mal. Joaquín es un buen amigo. You can say, Joaquín es un amigo bueno. Es lo mismo. Same, es lo mismo, ¿no? You can say, hoy es un mal día, hoy es un día malo. Okay, now, if it's preceding, it's going to be cut short. If it's following, it's the saying the same thing, then it's not cut short. Hoy es un día malo, hoy es un mal día. Eh, yo, soy, eh, yo soy un mal profesor, right? Yo soy un profesor malo, okay? Uh, tú eres un estudiante bueno. Tú eres buen estudiante. Same thing, right? Muy bien. Now, when grande appears before a singular noun, it is shortened to gran. And the, uh, it's kind of thing about grandanes, right? The great dame, grandanes. Okay, and the meaning of the word changes. Great. When it's gran appearing before a singular noun, it's great. And when it's following, big or large, grande. Okay? Bien, so, Don, Don Francisco es un gran hombre. He is a great man. La familia de Inés es grande, is big. See the difference there? Coming before the noun, it's great. Grandanes, great Dane. La familia de Inés es grande. Her family is large. Ok. Muy bien. Muchas gracias por estar aquí hoy. Y nos vemos pronto. Adiós.